Valentine's. All right. Yay. Being, and the reason why I'm yay, me and Carol Beth got our COVID test results. For those of you that don't know, hey, Hines, how you doing? How's your mom and them? Um, I'm Stacy, uh, big mama. Uh, my husband, that man, Bo. And our only child left at home, Carol Beth. Oh. Our heart. She is our whole heart. And for any of my kids watching, other kids watching, y'all too, but mainly her. <laughs> um, she's 29 and she's autistic and developmentally, developmentally delayed. But she's smarter than any of <laughs> them. She's smarter than us. <laughs> but we are negative with our COVID test. That man tested positive Friday. It is now Wednesday. We've got five more days to go. Holy sweet niblets. He's doing good. He is breathing a little bit worse than he was yesterday. I've been ma making him do nebulizer treatments. Um, I even gave him my new pneumatic vest to do to keep that crap stirred up. Um, we're trying to keep him out of the hospital, if at all possible. I mean, if he needs to go, he's going. He might not say that he don't need to go, but I will I said a bad word, didn't I? I'll pile his button. <laughs> I'll pile his butt in that truck and take him on to the hospital. They said if you need to train now, y'all, I'm sorry. No, I don't want COVID again. I really don't. I can't get it again. Well, I mean I could, but Yeah, no, I can't. Um, anywho, did y'all hear about the crazy now I'm sorry. The crazy lady that put her child, her own child, any child, whether it be her own or not, she made them ride in the trunk. Now, I'm sorry. What part of child abuse do you hear? I'm going to get my angle where my flowers are there. But what part of child abuse is that called? I mean, good gravy, lady. Are you out of your of a loving mind. Now, I mean, I know COVID's made us all a little on edge. Hold on. I'll be back. Okay. I'm back. I'm sorry. I heard the warning signal go off on my phone, the emergency alert. And I didn't know if it was due to the weather. I mean, we've been having some very hot days here lately. And we were supposed to have had storm showers today and it never did so I'm afraid it might hit tonight and I don't like tornadoes at night I don't like tornadoes period me and my mind's wild ain't it but especially at night okay because you can't see them boogers coming um, I'm going to move my flowers out of the way I'm still loving them um, but anywho they say and Carol Beth taught me this one she had heard it on the internet or something. In order to transport someone that has COVID and you don't have COVID, put them in the back, like the rear seat. Not in the back, like in the bed of the truck, but in the, the back seat. Have the window rolled down where they are and have your window rolled down. Now, that makes a lot more sense than shoving them in the trunk. Okay? I mean, some days on giving days, I want to shove them in the trunk anyway. <laughs> but no, seriously. I love him with my whole heart. Uh, if anything wants to happen to that man, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I couldn't even... I could not even, like, for real. Anywho, 
Hey, Heinz, how you doing? Right, we've gotten some more subscribers, and I wanted to... Hold on. Been wanting to do this. Well, I thought I could. Okay, Carol is a new subscriber. Hey, hon, how you doing? Um, and we just had another one, but I can't get her name to pop up. Okay, anywho, hey Carol, nice to have you with us. Yay! So we're getting there, we're at 870. Anyway, tonight for supper, this is going to be another cook with me. I know a lot of y'all are asking, you know, why don't you do the talk, do you know, just the, the chatting. Like I used to. And I have, I've gone back and I started watching, I'm getting some water. I started watching some of my videos from before COVID and I can tell a big difference in my content. Y'all let me know. Comment down below if you've been with me since, you know, before 2020. Um, let me know, has my content from then to now changed as much as I think it's changed? Um, I just, I think it's changed. I don't sit down and talk like I used to. We don't do Money Mondays like we used to. Um, Frugal Friday. Uh, <laughs> um, I really got to looking back and I'm like, why did I stop doing that? It, you know, everybody seemed to like those. Because when someone made the comment not too long ago of they would rather I kind of do more like I used to do, and I'm like, what did I used to do? And so that's when I went back and looked, and I'm like, I did used to do that, didn't I? So I'm going to try to kind of find that again. My brain just, it seriously does not function the way it used to. They told me it might one day, it just might turn on, and there it is. Then again, I might stay loony as a busy bug. And that's okay, too. I guess they didn't know how loony I really was beforehand. I ain't working on tea. Um, that's what I was going to tell you. Tonight for supper, we are having corned beef and cabbage. Did I already say this? I did, I think, and potato pancakes. Did I tell y'all that, or am I just thinking that I needed to remember to tell y'all that? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but since I'm going to be doing potato pancakes, I'm not going to do our typical hoe cakes or cornbread to go with it. That would just be too much. I think it would just be too much. So, I put my corned beef in this morning. Like I said, it's one of two that I have left from St. Patrick's or March last year. I got it all day. Um, I wished I had smell-o-vision. Oh, I steamed up my camera. Look at that. And it's just falling slap apart which is the way I wanted it. I didn't want it burnt. I didn't want... I've been having it going like at high since 9-ish, maybe 10-ish. It was around 10 this morning. It was around 10 this morning. All right, now, for our cabbage, I'm, I mainly want to show y'all the... Um, oh, good gravy. Hold it. I'm trying to get trying to get my act together. That's a who dang it. Alright, I'm gonna go with this. I think. 
ask me what I'm doing, I'll tell you I don't know, which is honest truth. Hey, let me wash up my skillet, and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Um, I got my skillet washed up. Now, for my cabbage, usually I use bacon grease. Yeah, I had a little piece of corned beef. It is so good. The fat, oh, the fat's where it's at. Um, but I don't have bacon grease caught up at the moment. It's been a while since we've done bacon. Y'all all know the crisis. But I did get this um, salt pork. So I'm going to throw, I don't know, I got two small heads of cabbage. I wished I could. That's something that I, I wished I could go into the store and pick out for myself is my produce. Because I know what I'm making it for, and in my mind, I knew I wanted, you know, some bigger cabbage. Cabbage is very inexpensive, and so a, a bigger one would not have been expensive to do. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, it would have gone right on in line with my budget. Like I said, we're doing meat as the side and the vegetables as the entree. Um, that's just how we're rolling. And that was a very kind of small corned beef. It's enough for me, Carol Beth and Fat Man. She actually likes corned beef. She does not like the cabbage. And I don't know if she's going to like the uh, potato cakes. All right. But what I've done so far, hold on, let me get my bag of salt pork. I just took two pieces of salt pork and put it in my pan. I've already got my pan on like a medium low. Um, I'm going to raise that up here in just a minute. Um, the temperature. I should have let it sizzle when I put it in, but I digress. I did not. This time I'm just going to store my store repackage my salt pork I put the label in there just to kind of confirm what it is I don't want anybody confusing it with bacon um, and then just put it in the ziplock bag and now we are going to zip her up buttercup all right my tea's about to boil my salt pork hadn't done nothing yet so I know I need to bump that I'm gonna show you my cabbage that's what I'm kind of trying to do okay that's I need to see that in the refrigerator so here are my cabbages my head the cabbage yeah see my dilemma but cabbage spreads so <laughs> it will actually make more than what you think so we're kind of looking at it from that regard all right I'm just gonna I don't know. I've never done cabbage the way I do my lettuce. Whoa. I've been doing stuff like that all day. I've either dropped it or knocked it over. One of the two. Alright. So here's kind of how I do my lettuce. We're going to see if it works. Take your bottom of your, you know, and you're just going to kind of even it out. It's not going to do like lettuce. <laughs> no, that didn't work. Usually, if you do lettuce like that, your end will just pull out like a plug. But cabbage does not do that way. Alright. I am going to cut the end off. I always pull out the, a few of the outer leaves because... Lord knows what all has touched that. Whoever picked it, whoever packaged it, whoever unloaded it, whoever put it out at the store, all the people that had picked it up and put it back. <laughs> you know what I mean? All them folks. Alright, we're just going to kind of see if we can... And usually, I don't worry too much about getting that middle out. I do cut the end off. 
but if I've always just done it this way, I'm just kind of go through and do some little slits, like make a square, and then kind of see if I need to make the slits a little bit deeper. It's coming. Hold on. I'm coming. Oh, come on. What'd y'all do? Watch, watch Big Mama wrestle with the cabbage. <laughs> well, by journeys, it's not wanting to come out. one is that little bit right there just to kind of break off. It should break off. It ain't just don't want to. Mm -mm. It ain't letting go. <laughs> it is not letting go. Wait a minute. There we go, maybe. Well, at least my salt port's getting ready. They're on with the game. How about you, Cabbage? You gonna join the game? Alright. Maybe I just need to pull it off. If I could get it to split. Maybe when I whacked it, I shoved it on up in there. <laughs> okay, that got it out. Now, I'm going to want to kind of wash it. And it will flow through the leaves. I see it going in and out of each little... See? You just want to kind of... I, see how it's seeping in and through? Alright, now we're going to cut her open and see if that didn't clean her. I think that's always how I clean. Might be my knife. See how the water, see how it's in between the leaves? So that water has cleaned her out for me. Yeah, we can break open like to there. There's no dirt. See? So, I am just going to take, ooh, don't knock open my corned beef. That would be bad. Alright, gotta get, get situated. <laughs> y'all know y'all want to sit, sit a spell. Alright. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of slide this salt pork around. We are A, looking for the juices and the flavors. It's going to add actually some salt flavoring to this. And we want little slivers because I want it done fast. This is almost like a fried cabbage instead of a, well, or a stewed cabbage. Um... You can boil it in just straight water. I know. I'm not one for that. Um, I mean, I do it sometimes. I've done it that way before. And you might see me do it that way again. But tonight, I just wanted to kind of cut it up with that salt pork. And we're almost cutting kind of like coleslaw. Just, you know... Like that, like that. Not as thin as cold sauce, but the same premise. Ooh, I need to turn this down just to her. Alright, I'm not going to do it. A little fork no more. We're going to move on to the big gun. I think the serrated knife will be the way to go.
My hands have not wanted to be doing anything today. Like I said, I've dropped things. I'm just holding it down in here while I'm sawing away. And once I add some more salt to it, it will actually bring some of that water out of the cabbage. I can remember when we had our farm and we grew a bunch of cabbage. And usually, our luck, the beetles or the bugs, whatever they were called, Fat Man knew. And I remember squash beetles. Good Lord have mercy. Those things took out an entire crop. But we had cabbage beetles one time. And he put some seven dust on it. It was going to be like way before we ate it. You know, in time that we could pick it and do. I mean, he coated them suckers down. It didn't do much good. They still had, you know. But we didn't let anything go to waste. We picked them. And we pulled out all the bad, so we thought. But honey, as we were pulling seven dust, the pesticide, we used was just falling off of the leaves and I'm like how in the world so we rinsed and we rinsed and we rinsed and I washed and I, I'm gonna cut that bit off too I don't ever leave any of the core in mine it's just no uh, anywho I rinsed and washed and we were getting ready to go to church that night and I was cooking them and as I was steadily cooking them all you could smell I swear all you could smell was seven dust because you know I knew what it smelled like from putting it out well maybe we weren't going to church that night we'd gone to church the night before that's what it was and our pastor at the time he would tell you he was a pastor first, a farmer second, and then a dad and a father third. <laughs> His kids were grown and gone by that time. But anywho, I mean, he had grown grandchildren. But love that man. Oh my goodness, we love that man. Um, so I called him. I'm, I'm like, I don't know who else would know the answer to my question. Because he was at, I'm always asking us, how y'all's crops doing? What y'all doing? Now, ours are doing this. What are y'all's doing? And we would just kind of trade info. And, um, and that was good to get, you know, information from someone else. To make sure, you know, of, oh, is you're getting attacked by squash beetles? Yeah, they have. You know, what do we do? Um, that type thing. So, I called him. And I told him about what had happened, about, you know, Fat Man using the pesticide. And, uh, we waited the allotted time. And them jokers still had that powder in there. And about how could I get it out that, you know, it was cooking and you could smell it. <laughs> you can smell it. But, um, uh, and he's like, I don't know what to tell you. So... I went ahead and cooked it, and I drained that water off, and I'd cook it a little bit more, and this is when I would use water, mainly. I'd drain it, and by golly, and I just kept doing that until it, it didn't, you know, smell. I thought, okay, that got it rinsed out. Well, we got to eating it, and to me, 
it still tastes like that smell. Nobody else, everybody was like, I, I don't know what you're talking about, Mama. It's fine. Well, they all ate it. Like I said, we didn't waste nothing, not with as many as we had to feed. And um, so they were all like, find us. We ain't eating them. Well, the pastor asked, he called the next day, wanting to know how it was. How did it turn out? And I'm like, well, I guess it was all right because they ate it. And they didn't get sick or die during the night. <laughs> I guess it's all right. I said that's what I was calling. I was calling to see if y'all didn't, if y'all answered. If you didn't, I need to start planning some meals. <laughs> oh, yep. Things we do. All right. Y'all probably don't want to hear my stories while I'm cutting up cabbage. But you're going to hear them anyway. <laughs> if you don't like them, all you got to do is turn me off. But y'all know you don't want to do that. You want to see how much how this ends. It's kind of like a train wreck. You're already invested. you got to know. <laughs> right? Okay, now, I am going to add some liquid because it's going to need some liquid. But what the liquid I'm going to add is going to be, I do believe I'm going to use the meat liquid from the crock pot. I'm just going to take that good old juice and pour on in here. I do have some ham bouillon I could use. But, I think I'm just going to use that corned beef juice. That way it'll have that flavor. I mean, we're wanting the flavor from the salt pork. Usually, if I don't do ham broth, I will do um, chicken broth. But, I think, like I said, I think I'm going to use... The uh, corned beef and cabbage liquid. Not that any of y'all could see my face. Hey, I'm still here. I'm taking some leaves to the garbage. Cabbage leaves. Alright, so. That's the cabbage. It's going to be kind of doing its thing. I'm going to put a lid on. I'm going to add some of this liquid. Put a lid on and just kind of let it do its thing. Then we're going to move it on to potato cakes. That's what you're here to say. Right? Right. <laughs> okay, here is one dip. <laughs> don't do as I do. Do as I say, don't do as I say, do as I do. Anywho, precaution. Be careful, in other words. <laughs> I did get my corned beef juice. See, there's some of the corned beef flakes. There's the seasonings. I did get some of the juice in there. But note, I just picked up a slow cooker liner, picked it up, brought it over here, and started dumping it. <sighs> Steam comes out of that bag as you're dumping. <laughs> my hand's fine. It's my fingertips. I'm gonna <laughs> I'll am i be fine. It'll be all right. It'll be all right. That's what we tell one. You'll be all right. Be all right, go eat you some grass. That's what Fat Man would always tell the kids. You sick? Go eat you some grass. What? You think you broke your leg? Boy, you better go eat you some grass. So when we came, when he called and said he had COVID, oh, mm -mm, you better stand outside and eat you some grass. <laughs> <sighs> all right, but potato cakes. This is the leftover potato filling that I had from those loaded volcano potatoes. Y'all, I've got more comments on that video than any of them ever, I think. I do believe. Um, yes, a lot of you have made the comment, it looks time consuming. It was, but I'm going to tell you, that flavor was worth every single second of work that I did. 
trust me they will be made again special occasions probably <laughs> but they were really good they were really good and I still have some jumbo potatoes left so tomorrow night we're gonna be doing a chili meal a chili casserole and we're gonna have potatoes on the side yeah I like chili on my baked potato saying. Anywho, I had all this filling left and so I'm like I'll do my potato cakes. Fried potato cakes will go great with corned beef and cabbage. Potatoes were usually if you do corned beef and cabbage it will have potatoes and carrots in it because it is true Irish dish and they, you know, they mainly eat taters. But I was, and I think I am going to have to do it my way. Somebody had told me, one of y'all, one of our viewers, told me that all you did was take your mashed potatoes and you rolled it in flour. And I guess maybe if they weren't, like, sat in the refrigerator, I'm going to have to turn my heat down. Sat in the refrigerator, usually I would always add... And I'm going to have to do it to these. I was going to try it like they said. I just, I can't get my eggs. I'm telling y'all, my hands ain't worth what for. Y'all probably ain't never heard it put that way. It ain't worth what for. Because it ain't worth what the for. <laughs> ain't worth what for. Alright. This is how my grandma made it. And how I always make it. One egg into your taters. I hope that wasn't a shell. You're going to add milk. Just enough to make them where they'll hold together. And sometimes Grandma, if she was in a real bad pinch, you could either use canned evaporated milk or pet milk, as it's called. She would have dry milk on hand because you never knew. Uh, for whatever reason, she might not could have gotten to the store, or we ran out before we ran out of money. We ran out of money before we ran out of month. Uh, Y'all know how that's going now, I tell you. Um, but yeah, she had all those little tricks. She would make sure to have canned pet milk, evaporated milk, um, things like that. Always, always on hand. All right, now, yeah, that's much better. See, this is now more like a, uh, mashed potato consistency. Might have gotten a little too runny. I can't decide neither way, can y'all? Alright, we're going to bump our heat back up. Alright, we're going to dust in. Yeah, y'all don't, y'all don't dare pay attention to what I, <laughs> I think I put too much milk in it, but it, it's going to be okay. It will. Trust me, we're getting an excess flour off. Yeah, I'll pray this works, because I might just screwed it up for all of us. Alright, then you're going to take and you're going to put it in your skillet. And now that i got my hands coated in flour, maybe this will go just a little bit easier. I turned my heat up. I guess I could put some flour in my bowl. And that would or cornstarch. But I, I don't want to keep adding and then have to take away. And I should have paid better attention. I was running my pie hole. And running your pie hole makes you mashed tater. <laughs> As my daddy used to say, I couldn't walk. I couldn't chew bubble gum and walk. had been taken when I was young I took a ballet and jazz class and 
I mean, I would run into stuff. Even back then, I was clumsy as all get out. And Daddy asked me one time, he's like, what, you sure didn't put your dance lessons to get used, did you? What'd you do with your dance money? And I'm like, well, I gave it to my teacher. <laughs> And, you know, he was talking about how uncoordinated I was. You know, it was a, uh, not an allegory, but he was being sarcastic, I guess. And I am going to let these really kind of do before I flip them. Because I'm scared if I do, we're going to add just a smidge of flour to this. Yeah, y'all know what makes glue, don't you? Flour and water or flour and milk, and you can make paste. Just FYI. Any of y'all old enough to remember the little jars of glue with the stick in the center? Yep. <laughs> it was called paste. I can remember at school, it was cheaper action to buy, evidently, the flour. Because if you needed glue, they would come by from room to room if you needed glue or art supplies. Because evidently, everybody in that whole darn school, yeah, you know, back then you had one elementary teacher and she taught you everything. I mean, everything. It wasn't dividing up and... You didn't have a teacher for this and a teacher for that. Seems like we did have a separate music teacher, but that was when we got older. Yeah, that was right. Your PE teacher was the same teacher you had. Because Miss Carter, she could do one kick on a kickball. I, I, yeah, kickball. Remember kickball? Kids don't do that no more. Dodgeball. Mm -mm, no. You're hurting them. No, you're not. You're playing a game. Now, granted, if you had a feud <laughs> with one of your seatmates, <laughs> you would kind of wobble a little bit harder. Um, I don't even remember where I was going with this now. Anyhow, oh, you have the glue. Um, evidently, all the teachers had to do art at the same time because. Miss Logan, the principal now, and she would take it upon herself, any job that needed doing, if what was I there that could do it, she'd go do it. We have seen Miss Logan unclog toilets. She's principal. That was not her job. But she did it because it needed doing. Janitor was busy doing something else. You think a principal would do that now? Heck no. <laughs> um, but yeah, they'd come by with a cart and it would have all the art supplies. I mean, everything from pipe cleaners and giggly eyes to, well, giggly eyes. I don't think they were giggly eyes. They were buttons. They were buttons. Now that I am remembering, they were buttons. Mm-hmm. Yep. Anywho, let's get ready to flip some potato cakes. Alright, we put him in first. And he's not sticking, which they shouldn't in this pan. Oh, he could have stayed just a smidge longer. Let's see what this one's doing. Oh, he's not ready yet either. They're gonna get, see how kind of bubbly and dry that is right there? And see how kind of wet and floury that is? You want it to kind of get like that all over. It's like frying pancakes. Think about it that way. I do need to go ahead and get me a pan ready. Or not a pan, a plate to put these on. And like I said, this all we're having is the corned beef, the cabbage, and the potato cake. So, I'm sure Batman is starving. 
I did order, well, order him. I did put it on my Walmart grocery order. Well, y'all saw those protein drinks. He is loving those. He said that helps keep him full. Um, and that was kind of one reason why I did get them. Because the first few days, he wasn't eating hardly anything. And I remembered when I was in the hospital with it, um, once I came to, I don't remember anything when I was out. But once I came to, and I still had the vent, well, the trach, um, and it was going through, um, and I had, still had my feeding tube in, they were doing baby formula when I had my feeding tube. And once I took that out, then I graduated to the, like, the Boost or Insurers or the Walmart Protein. And so, no matter what I had at a meal, I was ha they gave one of those kind of drinks to me. And, well, in fact, before I even got my meal, I had to do that for several, several days. And then my first meal was applesauce. That was strange. Actually putting something in my mouth, you know, to kind of. I acted like I was chewing. I wanted to chew something so that is giving me a hard time. I wanted to chew something so bad. It don't want to flip. It got caught up. That one didn't do right. I forced it to flip. So there you go. But, um, right. Watching that cook and me talk is about like watching paint dry, ain't it? <laughs> watching the dead, make sure they don't raise up. Y'all ever have to do that? Them old, real old, old people. My grandma lived to be a hundred. So, I can remember as a little girl, when Miss Parker died, they all went over to her house, a little sewing circle. They called it the sewing circle. It was the ladies from the neighborhood that liked to talk. And it wasn't gossip. It wasn't gossip. Because it was done in the sewing circle. But when Miss Parker died, um, they all got up with who's going to take what, you know, still the true southern thing. You take them a meal. That's just the way it was done. You show up at the funeral with a meal. But they were all like, okay, who's going to stay at the viewing? Who's going to stay that night? And viewings were always at the church. Your service was always at the church. That's just how it was. So, Grandma agreed that one time for Miss Parker that she would sit the night. And, oh, somebody, Miss Fannin agreed to sit with her. Nobody ever did it by themselves. And I had wanted to, and then I got scared because Lisa, my sister, seems like she and Robert were both like, mm-mm, that body gonna come up. You know the reason why they're there? They gonna sit up and play cards with her. And I was convinced that that's what was gonna happen. Miss Parker was gonna come too. Her and Grandma and Miss Fannin were gonna play cards and the next day we would go for the funeral. They had me convinced of this mess. So I'm like, oh, I ain't gonna play no cards with no dead one. <laughs> no. Uh-uh. We know she's got granddaughters, and if she sees you, she might think you're one of the granddaughters, and she's just gonna take her, you on with her. Uh-uh. Grandma wouldn't let them get me. Grandma wouldn't let them. Well, Grandma figured that was an adult thing that needed to be done, and so she didn't want me there. So she piled in with them. Yeah, you might bet not better go. I don't know what kind of mood Miss Parker's gonna be in. It might be a pure shock to her. Okay, Grandma, if you say so. 
And then I found out years later, that's why, I mean, I tore that one up. That one's not even going to be salvageable. You know how you do that first pancake? You know, if you're making pancakes, you make that first pancake and it just don't do right. We're going to call that my first pancake. <laughs> even though my first one did fine, that was the second one. Alright, now... We are going to do this one and pray for a better end. I almost like potato balls. Now, are these potato pancakes like potato latkes? Or potato balls. Isn't that what they're called? Potato latkes? Or the, the potato... Oh. Whenever the Jewish eat the... Um, is it... It's not the Passover meal. Is it? No, it's one of the... Is it Hanukkah? It's one of their holidays. Um, whoa. Whoa. Grease will pop up and it will get you, boo. Okay. Well, I should have gotten that broke one up and I did not. Alright. It's almost how you do like the drop cheddar biscuits. That's what it's reminded me of. The dough, anyway, I am making an ever loving mess. All right, so to make it where it's not gonna run for forever, I'm gonna check these are how they turned out. Flip it over. And you know it's good if you can pick it up and it hold its shape. Ooh, they're hot. But yeah, you can actually, that one's not going to hold its shape too well. But that's okay. It's all right. We're going to call it just a thing. Just how it rolls. All right, our cabbage is getting there. We're looking for like translucent colors. I see I didn't add any more water and there's plenty of liquid down at the bottom. Now, I'm at the point with this cabbage, I am going to, oh wait, you can't see it. My old darnings. Okay, can you see it now? Um, it's getting there. But do you see that water kind of collecting right there? That's the same water and then the water seeping out of the cabbage. The water seeped out and there's our salt pork. That's giving it flavor. I'm going to sprinkle in some salt. Believe it or not, my grandmother always used to, so I do. It's just how we do it. We add a little bit of sugar, like two teaspoons of sugar to our cabbage. Do not ask me why. I ate one of the little corners of the grip. Look hot. I'm going to take this lid off. And I'm just going to kind of eyeball. That right there. And then pinch salt, and we'll just put that lid back on and let it do its plain. We would always put a little bit of sugar in any kind of green. If it was cabbage, collards, mustards, whatever. Put just a pinch of sugar. Oh, well, two teaspoons of sugar. And it would take any of the bitterness out. We actually did have 
and we even grew some once I was grown that had um, a bittery taste. And Bo's like, I don't know what we did wrong. And I'm like, we didn't do anything wrong. All we got to do is add some sugar. What? I'm like, we add sugar. All right, let's see. Oh, that, that one slipped fine. And I didn't get it on camera. Well, journeys. Now watch, if I get ready to slip this one, it's going to mess. Oh, yep. Yeah, I ain't even going to try. Let's see if we can do this one. I don't want them to burn. Ooh. I'm going to kind of spin this one around before I flip it. What about this one? See, it's starting to burn, so I ain't going to have to flip them. I don't know how to flip them without them breaking. We're going to brace it with this. There. Alright, I'm going to finish cooking and we'll be back. I'll show you the plates. Okay, little tip. Flour can burn very easily. And you cover your grease fires. It caught on fire. I'm fine. Still fine. <coughs> Potato cake, pancakes are fine. I got two of them. A little burnt. Well, one of them. One of them's a little burn on the other side. <laughs> oh well. It will be eat. I was going to show you. This is our cabbage now. Look at all that liquid. That's from finally letting it cook out. And then when I added that sugar, it really kicked off. And that salt, remember I told you salt would draw the water out? It did. <laughs> it did. So, there's that. And then here's our corned beef. Yum. And thank you. So, I'm probably not going to plate it up and show it to you. I still got to watch a grease fire. It happened. It happened. <laughs> so until next time, y'all be good, be sweet. Don't start nothing. There won't be nothing. Share. Play nice with others. It doesn't hurt anybody to be kind. Yeah, it doesn't take any extra effort. If you're saying hi, just say, hey, hon. How you doing? There's mom and them. <laughs> that is the true I swear to you, that's the true southern way. Of course, you can be the plantation southern. Well, my daddy's going to be at the plantation. <laughs> that's your southern bell. I didn't, I didn't grow up on that side of town. No, I did not. I didn't grow with that kind of spoon in my mouth. No, I did not. I grew up with the, hey, hon, how you doing? How's your mama and them? You tell your granny I said the biggest hey and give her the biggest hug in the world. That's what people would say to us. <laughs> All right, until next time. Bye, y'all.